Hello and welcome to AEF TV uh, in association with Angerati. I'm joined now by uh, John Campion, who is the uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer for APR Energy. Uh, John, firstly, welcome. Thank you. Th thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks for making the time. And uh, we were talking a little bit off air, uh, and uh, you said that, uh, in your opinion, Africa has got the wrong end of the stick uh, a, 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 a lot of t times. And uh, uh, and I, I kind of said, well, that's a great comment. That, uh, and uh, to have you here to sort of explain that, just that, 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 that would be great to okay, hear. So, yeah. so, so here's the deal. Yeah. What's happened from, for a very, very long time is the uh, redundant, old, antiquated Western technology has gotten shoved to Africa. Okay? And it's been quite all right and quite acceptable to sell your, send your old equipment and retire it in Africa. And I think that's an absolute... It's a travesty. It's a travesty, but it's morally bankrupt. Mm. It's absolutely morally bankrupt mm. because to charge you know, high pricing, and looking at you, you can, some companies will justify a high price by virtue of the fact that it's a credit risk, or some people will do this, or this or that. The other. Look, at mm. the end of the day, Africa deserves power and power generation technology that's state of the art and as is, is as efficient as anything that's used in any of the rest of the world. Mm. So, so, my, my soapbox is this. Yeah, go on. So, we're going to a, a show in, in, in America. Right. It's a trade show like this. Mm. And uh, one of my guys, it's on a plane. And a company is on the plane and says, oh, Africa, we love Africa. And he says to him, why do you like Africa? He says, oh, we, can send all our old, we can send all our old equipment there. And I just, I'm sorry, it just annoys me, okay? What, what, Western world, we made our economies on carbon, and lots of it. Yes. Right? Piles of it. Yeah. And mountains of it, yeah. right? Yeah. England, Europe, America, and now we're trying to invo in enforce this sort of holier than now attitude on... Oh, yeah. Don't you guys dare do that as well, because... Right. Yeah, yeah, the, the, is, the, the Minister of, of Energy from Botswana said yesterday, look, you know, you've developed your economies in coal, I've got abundant coal, I'm going to go do that. Mm. It's cheap energy, it's good for me. And what the rest of the, what the, rest of the, what the Western world should be doing is saying, how can we give him some really, really good quality and good technology to, to that end, mm. right? But yet what's happening, who are building the majority of the coal-fired power plants in Africa? Who are? China. Exactly. And what are they using? Old Babcock technology, old American technology. Mm. Okay. So is fluidized coal beds, is the latest coal technology going to Africa? No. Mm. But yet we're complaining. Mm. So again, there's two types of technology being shoved into Africa. Chinese technology, price is right, there's a trade there, but it's coal. Mm. And and uh, heavy fuel burning or diesel burning, older antiquated technology. And we should be putting the better and the best technology we have into Africa. So, so why, why do you think that is being allowed to happen? Is, is, is that because at buy side, you don't have the right skills to be able to uh, pick up on the fact that, hang on a minute, this is, this is old stuff you're giving us. Is, is it that? Or, or, or is it just purely a price point thing? Say, look, well, this is cheap. Pr pr price has a certain certain yeah. extent on it, but at the end of the day, the newer the technology, the more fuel efficient the technology is. Sure. Right. And what's the greatest component of pretty much the majority of fossil burning technology is the fuel component. Mm -hmm. So if you sell a higher technology, whilst the price may be a little bit higher, the overall fully loaded price to the customer and the efficiency of the system the, will be lower. The output. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But they're not getting off of that te technology. Mm. Right. So. The technology we're offering is the most fuel efficient, latest uh, technology from diesels, uh, in terms of diesels that you can use in North America. We can use them in England, we can use them in Germany, we can use them in France, we can use them in North America, and we can use them in, um, in Africa. Mm. But we're also using turbines, which is probably the cleanest burning technology. Sure. Uh, much, much cleaner, 20 mm. times cleaner than a diesel engine. Mm. So, we're offering our customers throughout Africa that type of technology. We're installing currently 250 megawatt of turbine in Libya, which is the largest deployment of gas turbine in Africa ever in terms of, in terms of this type of technology. And we believe that that makes sense, right? So you've got to do the right thing. So we're, we're, we're providing them with state-of-the-art turbines 
and state-of-the-art diesel engines for a total of 450 megawatt, and it just works, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? It's not old rubbish, it's mm -hmm. brand new state-of-the-art stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's a good trade for me, a good trade for my shareholders, and it's also a good trade for the, for the customer. And, and it's also one of those things where, uh, you know, and I read a lot about this subject, and, uh, and I think, you know, we're so far away from not having fossil fuels as part of the energy mix. They need to be part of the energy mix. Absolutely. They need to be there. Well, you know, because, you, look, the sun only shines so many hours in the day. The wind only blows so many hours in the day. You need a base load first. Yeah. You need to have a base load. And you, and and you, you go peak back, off of that. You go back to elementary chemistry and you look at the, uh, the energy potential within hydrocarbons. There is nothing else that matches Thank you. that. Thank you. Nothing else matches but that. But at the end of the day, we, we've, we've got to make this we got to make this as economic as economically and as eco-friendly as the economies can bear and and that is your point that you know look we know we got to burn this stuff yes but why not burn it in the most efficient way? Correct. We, you know, maybe even tag on some carbon capture. And, Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of different things. And I've got yeah, yes. my own opinion about carbon yeah, well, capture. Well, I'm not but, disagreeing with that yeah, at all because yeah. I think, again, yeah. Yeah. we should be providing the latest technology. We should yeah. be providing a, a, a combination of really, really uh, fuel efficient technology and really clean technology. Yeah. For argument's sake, a, a gas turbine worth supplying. Yeah. It's 42 parts per million of NOx. Yeah whereas a diesel engine is between six and 800 parts per million of NOx. Mm. That's between 30 and 40 times cleaner. Yes. So why should any part of Europe have clean air and West Africa not? Mm. 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 It doesn't make any sense, right? No, it doesn't. So I'm sort of passionate about that. Mm. And I think it's, it's uh, what's been happening in the past and I think it's beginning to change. And one of the, one of the, uh, the greatest uh, um, You're going to have to edit this part. I'm missing a word. One of the greatest uh, catalysts, cat not catalysts, no. uh, uh, examples of that yeah. rather, is Africa skipped landlines. Right? Yes. They skipped telephone landlines. Yeah, straight right? into 3G mobile. Yeah, yeah. skipped it, right? Yeah. And now it's doing banking. It's doing. It's 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 a phenomenal, uh, just you know, paradigm shift. Yeah. Right. And I think that did that happen because of the. Uh, well, A, the need for it and the commercialization, everybody wants a cell phone. And right? also it's way too expensive to put the old infrastructure in, or the old paradigm just didn't work. Exactly, yeah. so it changed, right? Yeah. So I, I think again, you know, putting the best technology in makes all the sense in the world. Mm. So I think we've got two things to we need to do as a company, and we do this as a company. We provide the best technology at an affordable price into certainly the emerging markets. Mm. No shoot, right thing to do. I don't do any business in Europe. I don't do any business in North America. Everything we do is emerging markets. Right. Uh, first thing. Then that enables us to do some secondary thing, which I'm quite passionate about, is giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. We build technology centers. We do schools. We do medical clinics. Everywhere we have power projects, we do that. Francistown, uh, Botswana, we put in a, a technology center. So we talk to the locals, and we've got a lot of local employees, and we talk to the locals, we talk to the local community. What can we do for you? And they said, well, what's the choices? And we said, we can do this, this, or this. And overwhelmingly, they said, give us access to the internet. Yeah. So, so we put a technology center in. Mm. So these parents, you never saw parents more proud than seeing their children access the internet. And you know what a huge, 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 huge eye-opening experience and just world expansion that is for them. Because that, uh, that then gives them access to a whole lot of, you know, I don't know, e-learning and all that. Everything. Uh, everything like that. Everything. Which, which, the, which then, uh, it has that self-fulfilling thing, you know, more employable. In loop Absolutely, and, uh, so, right? Yeah. And the more computers they use, the more power they use, therefore, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. But it's, it's all about, I think, it's all about, it's all about sustainability. Mm. Sustainability of uh, democracy sustainability of economies, the sustainability of my shareholder base. Mm. It's all about sustainability. So if you believe that um, you know, long-term wealth is not created by short-term gain, mm. then you've got a completely different outlook on life. Yeah, and you, you look at things in a, in a, in a different a, way, in, in a different way, and a different lens. So you, you, we're kind of coming to the uh, uh, end of our time here, but I wanted to pick on on one thing, which has been a, a, a trend uh, what people have been saying that they've used the telecoms example uh, sure. uh, uh, and it's valid I think uh, but what I wanted to ask you is uh, what's the sort of 
you know, in this sort of leapfrogging energy, what's the most innovative approach you've seen? It's not, and, and, and this doesn't have to be necessarily, oh, it's been done, or it, it, it may be in the thought process stage, but what's the most sort of innovative mix you've seen people think about or do? Hybrid. Right. I mean, the combination of, of you said it earlier in the conversation, mm -hmm. the amount of energy in, 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 in a carbon molecule, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the combination of, of hydro, the combination, micro hydro, the combination of, uh, of solar and wind with a hybrid component of a diesel or a gasoline or, or whatever, I think that's... So there's sort of framework, it's not one thing. It's no, it's not, like it's not one thing. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not one thing, it's, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the, and hybrids become a really, you know, thanks to Toyota Prius, it's become a great buzzword, everybody yes. understands it, right? Yes. Yeah. But, and, I, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And I was just actually talking to, uh, to a minister earlier, and we're, 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 we're talking about this whole uh, situation of um, rural electrification. Mm. And everybody talks about solar, and solar this and solar that. Well, mm. unless you're at really good storage, when you need the light, you don't have the sun. Mm. And when the sun's not there, you need the light, right? Mm. So you try to look at all this. And what we were talking about is the sort of the, the concept of a mass-produced black box, if you will. Mm. Okay? And you got you got good wind, you plug two wind turbines in. You got a hydro, you plug a micro hydro in. It's kind of like if you will a big USB. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, you know, around the corner you got a digester. Everybody throws a trash in it, and that creates the, uh, if you will, the methane that fires a base load generator. So just an, another way of going about it. Mm. Again, back to that's hybrid. Uh, do, do you know when you're talking about that? Do, 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 what conjures up in my mind? IKEA. Exactly. Yeah. You can have, you, you can yeah. have that. You can have that. that. You can have that. Exactly. You can have. The, but it all slots together, together nicely. Lego. Yeah. And exactly. But you mass market. You know, yeah. not mass market. You mass. You you design it. And you. Uh, build it in uh, with our friends in China really cheap mm. and then you know and just electricity rural electrification you know just is so empowering yes like yeah. I, I'm from a country I'm from Ireland yeah. you'd never guess right but I, I didn't yeah you'd never <laughs> guess and I remember my father talking about it and we rural electrification started in Ireland in 1932 yeah it's Ireland yeah I mean, you know, God help us, Bono wasn't even alive. But anyway, so we had rural electrification in 1932. It started. They didn't finish it till the 50s. Yeah. And there were still places in Ireland in the 50s that didn't have electricity. Mm. So it takes a long time and it takes, you know, a, a very, very strong willed government to make it happen. Mm. But I think with various leaps in technology, I think that, you know, Africa can have it in a shorter period of time than for argument's sake, my country had it. Mm. Because there's like different ways of doing things, and we even have light bulbs. We got LED lights, yeah. right? We yeah. don't have this. We got that. We got a lot yeah. more efficiencies yeah. Yeah. everywhere. We got efficiency on the generation side, and we got efficiency on the use side. Yeah. And yeah, that all makes sense. And it, it's a shame that we're co we've come to the end of our time here. It's been pleasure. such a pleasure talking thank to you. Thank you, sir. It's been really exciting. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, more interviews like this on uh, AEF, EnergyNet, and Engirati. I uh, hope you enjoyed this session. Thanks. Thank you.